Okay, hello everyone, Random Gamer Riven here. And while the credits scroll, I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to this collection. Now, interestingly, you'll notice the title screen says the name as Williams Arcade's Greatest Hits, whereas the actual box and official name is Midway Presents Arcade's Greatest Hits, although all the games included on this collection, I believe, were actually developed by Williams. And this is actually a North American exclusive Sega Saturn game. And this was actually, this collection was released on Dreamcast, Sega Saturn and Mega Drive. The Mega Drive version only has five games. I believe it's missing bubbles. And the Dreamcast version doesn't have any of the Sega Saturn extras included in this one. So I'm going to chat about it in a sec. I'm just going to let the credits roll. And then when we get to the introduction, we're going to start with this first section will be a look at all the historical stuff and a bit of some of the interviews included on this disc set. Then we'll be looking at the games and finally going back to look at the art and sort of cabinet work at the end of the video. Okay, so here we go with a huge introductory section. This is actually about 20 minutes here of footage of me scrolling through all the various texts from the intro. There's actually seven pieces. So there's an intro that gives you a bit of a history on Williams. And then there's a bit of history on each of the games. Five of the games actually have interviews or well, snippets of interviews with the creators. I believe the PC version actually has the full interview. I think the Saturn version is slightly cut up interviews. This I saw there was a PC one that had like a 12 minute interview of one of the guys. And obviously this one, they obviously didn't quite have the space. But it's a really, really nice package that gives you some really nice history on the various games that Williams created. And it's actually a North American exclusive. So if you're a shoot 'em up arcade fan, this is effectively sort of one to seek out if you're certainly in Europe or Japan and you actually want a full shoot 'em up collection because this is Defender on it, Defender 2 and Sinstar. You've got Robotron, you've got some really historical video games on here. So I'm not going to say much more, I'm just going to let this text scroll out. It is about 20 minutes long, so if you want to skip to the games, I'll enjoy this really historical look back. Interestingly, in one of the clips you'll see, Larry Dumas talks about some unreleased games, which is actually quite interesting. I notice, however, most of those games he mentions are actually on MAME these days. So I'm wondering if the Williams guys did supply 
or the mid, what was the later Midway, did supply some of the ROMs to, or at, dumped them for the main project, which might be quite interesting. And I think I might actually do a follow up actually looking at certainly Playball and Speedball are on MAME these days. So someone's obviously dumped the one because Larry DeMar mentions in one of these interviews later on, he mentioned he had the only working Playball in his office. And I assume that's where they've actually got the dump from. The most amazing project was the Defender project because that was, we were the number two pinball company at the time and we were, we were yeah, we're going to get in the video game business, yeah, right, Williams. And we got a bunch of people, they were put in a separate facility um, over on Belden Avenue. And this group, you know, everybody had one goal and that was in a pretty short time frame to do whatever it took to make a, to make a really hot video game. And, and the, just the way things were accomplished by that group and the atmosphere among this group uh, was just amazing. I've never seen it equaled. And you know now I'm, I've got a management role and I would love to take and bottle whatever the ingredients were um, to try and create a situation like that again. And, and it was just, it's the best situation I've ever seen or been in. Management came down. This was about three months before the show, before we had to finish this game. And management came down and goes, "Man, this game is a pile of shit. I mean, this game is is so stupid. I mean, what are these people on here? I mean, where are you going? You know?" It was like, you know, they were they were saying, "Okay, you got to get rid of these stupid astronauts out of there. You know, get some game going here. You know, because you are really blowing it." It was pretty crazy because the night, this, this was insane actually, the, um, at the time we, for our development system we used this thing called a Motorola Exerciser, which was this huge, the, probably the most bloated overpriced computer ever created. It was a dual floppy disk system, they used 8 inch floppy disks which were like, you know, enormous, held like, you know, 10 bytes on them. And you had um, this $20,000 box that I mean, would only work for like three or four days at a time before it fa something failed, you know, it was, it, was, it was horrendous. So it got to the point late in the project where it was taking like half an hour to just assemble the program. And so it just, it was, and, and, the, and, the, and the odds of actually getting an assembly that actually made it were, were so low that the last week of the, of the project, the f we just essentially just, just object code patches. We left the computer on the program was in memory. Thank goodness it never was a power failure. And we just made patches in the code and just kind of stuffed them in there for the different bugs.
when I first got the Digital Eclipse program, I, you know, my, my mind was blown. My first encounter was actually uh, Paul DeSalt called me over to the, to the front of our building, and there's two guys there with a Macintosh, and Paul goes, I want to show you something. And, you know, he plays with his Macintosh and types something, and all of a sudden the, the carpet sweeps of the memory test, which is pretty much a signature of the old Williams games, um, is appearing on the Mac, and I'm like, oh my god, you guys wrote a simulator. Yeah, the, the, the controls were totally uh, one of a kind at the time, and, and they've hardly been used ever since. Uh, you know, Eugene really, uh, you know, wanted to give you that monster control, and, and part of the, you know, one of the really adrenaline rushes in the game as a result of, of the amount of power you have. You've got so much power and control that, you, that the game can put you in really tough situations you can actually fight your way out of, and that's one thing that keeps people coming back to it over and over. I think they will soon realize that humans are nasty little things. You know, they're 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 trying to blow up things. They're, they've got car bombers. They got nuclear terrorists. You know, all these mass murderers. You know, all these nasty little habits that humans have. You know, create wars, threaten to blow up the world. You know, endangering the entire planet. I mean, it's clear that humans are psychos, and for their own protection, you know, will have to be confined. In, in, in safe zones, you know, in safe areas. There were some games in that period that uh, were producing either low numbers or not at all that, that most of the audience probably hasn't had a chance to see. Um, some low production games were Mystic Marathon, um, Turkey Shoot, Inferno. Um, those three were, they were tested and there were some number built of each of those models and they can be found in collectors' hands but the, the quantities are limited. Then there were games like uh, Playball, Speedball, um, and there's at least one other um, that were fully developed and tested but were never put into production and there are no uh, games in collectors' hands. I have the only existing Playball sitting in my office.
that quality that I saw back then it still stands out. A lot of times these days with uh, a lot of the games, the newer games that we see come out in the arcades, they're interesting, but they're either um, they're, they're beautiful games to look at, but the gameplay is real lousy. It's not an enjoyable experience. Or they've got some interesting gameplay things going there, but they, they don't pay attention to graphically what really makes a game look good and, and can help bring the player into the experience more. Uh, there's, you don't see a whole lot of attention being paid to, to, to all of the parts of a good game all at the same time. Uh, as, they, as they used to in, in the old days when the discipline seemed to have been different. And so it's really easy for me to believe that there's this, you know, classic bring the old stuff back again kind of sentiment out there. The kids, those kids, found out that if you only had one life left and you got into that death grip where it was about to destroy you, and then the warrior shot came and killed you, the warrior shot would reduce your lives to zero, and then the Sinistar would kill you, which would reduce your, li your number of lives left to negative one. And in the computer world, negative one is also a really big number, and all of a sudden, you'd have 255 lives left. And I, Lord knows how the kids would find these things, but I knew kids that could show me this in an arcade. They'd go up and say, look at this, and all of a sudden they have 255 lives, and man, you can play for a long time on Sinistar. <laughs> You've got 255 ships left. Compared to now, <laughs> we're, we're working with uh, uh, bubble gum and rubber bands and, <laughs> and hot glue, <laughs> essentially. And, and the, the memory in the game was, I believe, 96K, which is just nothing. <laughs> now, I mean, we, <laughs> we waste that on title screens <laughs> nowadays, you know. Um, so the... The real challenge in designing games back then was how do you do something interesting with some nice animation and how do you do it in such a small package because that doesn't allow us a lot of variety. Say the words just the movie. <laughs> and what do I say about them? Uh, I just want to hear them said. Joust the movie is uh, it's a, a little hobby I've been working on. Um, I guess the, the 
the transition is I started off as a toy designer, then I became a uh, video game designer, and then I would like to become a, a movie designer. So I had always thought that Joust would make a great movie. Um, the technology was never there for what I had in mind, but now it's more than there.
Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this look at the collection. That was all the games we've just shown. My game play footage wasn't perhaps as good as it could be. I need to practice a bit more. But all these old Williams arcade games, many of them were very, very hard. Although quite impressed with the Sin Star run I managed to do. But yes, they were all designed to be very hard. And you were you were literally only meant to be, as I said, in the, if you actually read in the Defender introduction, they said they were supposed to only be able to get to Wave 3 most of the staff before they all got killed. So... It's quite a nice little package looking at the art here. Some of this I think you'll find on the internet. Some of it you can't, which is quite interesting. But it is really nice to see some of this introduction. Unfortunately, you can't remove the start menu overlay. I did try every button press, sadly. One thing I will say, the emulation on this collection is not perfect. Some of the Easter eggs, although they crow about, you can access some of the Easter eggs in it. You can't access all the Easter eggs. Ironically, some of the Sinstar Easter eggs, because they didn't do the coin shoots and a few of the button setups and the dip switches in this collection you can't access some some of the easter eggs certainly the ones in sinstar i actually saw a guide website the other day that detailed how you've got a couple of easter eggs in sinstar and they were quite complex doing certain things in certain ways to unlock but it's really nice to actually see but unfortunately digital clips never quite did things to the full extent that they needed to because you need to emulate the coin shoots and everything exactly in order to um reproduce a few of the easter eggs but the emulation's pretty good. It's nice to just to have a recreation of these games. It's annoying that they actually include some Joust 2 artwork, but didn't include Joust 2 on the collection. So, oh well. Anyway, that's it from me. Hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, if you like our content, please do hit that like button, the subscribe button, and welcome to Randomised Gaming if you want to keep following us. Thank you.